Hello everyone, this is Old School from WhatTheBuck.net. This is our preview for the Dolphins preseason game. Game 3, Saturday night at Raymond James Stadium. Hopefully the weather holds up. I think the weather actually will play a part in this game regardless as Regis Ben is supposed to make his appearance as well as a number of other Buccaneer players like Kellen Winslow and Luke Stocker and Brian Price and Myron Lewis and Akeem Tlaib. There's a litany of players who are going to go out there and see some uh, actual preseason time in this game. But if the weather is crap like it could be due to Hurricane Irene, uh, they are not going to risk some of these players out there in bad conditions. Now, you may be saying to yourself, self, they're going to have to play in bad conditions during the year. Well, yes, that's when live fire is actually going on. I still think they'll be cautious if the weather is as crappy as it looks like it could be. Now, if it's not, or if I'm completely wrong, which is certainly feasible, this is a game where you're normally going to see the starters play at least a half, maybe into the third quarter. I know Josh in his pre, uh, pre-game conference said as much. And it's a chance for the Buccaneers to kind of shake off what happened against New England Patriots. Both of the lines really need to reestablish themselves, especially the offensive line, both in the running game, where we have to prove that we actually have a running game, whether it's LeGarrette Blunt or Lumpkin or Bradford or Graham. I don't really care who it is. I'd like to see our ones establish some sort of tempo with the running game, and that would be LeGarrette Blunt behind our ones on the offensive line. Uh, additionally, we need to see Josh Freeman actually have a good game. He hasn't put together a, a good game and, and good game film because he hasn't played a whole game. But even KC, he didn't look particularly sharp. He hasn't been particularly accurate. And he's certainly capable of a lot more than that. We're going to want to see that out of the skill positions, both out of Josh Freeman and then with the receivers receiving uh, the tongue lashing they got from Coach Morris about press coverage. See guys like Mike Williams step up and Sammy Stroud or Regis Ben if he gets a chance to get in there. Maybe Desmond Briscoe make his case even more strongly for additional playing time. It's a multifaceted formula when it comes to moving the ball down the field. Right? You've got to have protection. You've got to make the right reads. The receivers have to actually get open, or if they're in single, by definition they're open, and then Josh has to execute the throw. And we need to see our ones show that sort of efficiency in this uh, pivotal game three. On the defensive side of the ball, we need to see continued improvement uh, in both the pass rush, which we have seen, even though uh, we weren't able to get to Brady often, uh, we did see pass rush and pressure, but we got gashed in the offensive or in the defensive line with the running game with another 200 yards hung on us. Many of those things, as we talked to Steve White about it, were uh, schematic issues with the Patriots that we'll go back to film study and work on and hopefully through game planning do better this week against the Dolphins. But there are some fundamental things like missed tackles that we've just got to stop having happen. Over pursuit, which we have to, have, have to stop having happen. So those are the things that hopefully these young guys are going to have seen on tape and now be able to correct against a Dolphins team that is no slouch. They bring strength in their uh, skill positions with guys like Marshall and Hartline and Reggie Bush. Chad Henney is starting to develop despite the fact that the fans are booing him in Miami. Uh, and that offensive line is starting to solidify as well with Pouncey coming into the center position. And, and they're really taking this West Coast offense that they're implementing and, and moving the ball well. This is going to be a great challenge for our defense. And on the other side of the ball, that defense plays a 3-4. They're very active, very aggressive. Vontae Davis came out and said he and Sean Smith are the best cornerbacks in the league. So Josh Freeman will have a chance to go against the best cornerbacks in the league this week. Uh, I look to see some, some strong play out of the Bucks. I don't look to see them shrink from this. I hope they're going to bounce back. Uh, Mason Foster hopefully will come and continue to play strong regardless of the fines and continue to remind people why they went that direction with the mantra of play fast, play hard, play smart, play consistent. Uh, I hope to see some good things out of the guys on the field today or this, at this game. Dakota Watson, I think, is going to be sort of a bright spot. He continues to find ways to get on the field and make plays uh, on the offensive side. And I think Josh Freeman is going to be the high point on the offensive side. I think he has got... All of those skills, last year was not an aberration. He just got to start putting it together and, and drive us into this season. So I look to see the Bucks take this game. Uh, the score doesn't really matter. We're going to have twos and threes in there, so that's not really the point. But I do look to see them rebound, and hopefully my biggest hope is on that offensive line. Our guys like Davin Joseph and Jeremy Trueblood, Jeff Fain, Ted Larson, and Donald Penn can reestablish some air of dominance and start to develop that attitude that I think a team has to get to go from 10-6 and six to winning their division and being a contender in the playoffs. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think about the video. We'll be back afterwards with the post-game video.